Today, we're going to take a look at how your body composition affects your face. Well, namely, does the body composition affect facial attractiveness? When we talk about body composition, we're mostly referring to two factors, body fat and muscle mass. Your body is also comprised of other things like water, organs and bone mass, but these are less subject to variation because they're rigid. One thing we can control is the relative amount of body fat and muscle in our body, and this is where the idea of body composition comes from. So does this actually make you look more attractive? These two factors have a large influence on how your face appears. And we're going to first examine the preferred amount of body fat and muscular content that is found to be most attractive. In the present research, this is typically done by standardized assessments of body fat percentage and using scales like the BMI scale. And we're then going to see how different levels of body composition affect our facial appearances. Firstly, we've got to establish what the preferred body composition is in male and female subjects. This obviously isn't a set number, but rather a range of values. Carrying high amounts of fat tissue is not going to be as attractive to the average person. Similarly, carrying extremely low amounts of body fat can also be associated with disease, weak immune function, and poor bodily cushion and insulation. Like with most human bodily features, there is a middle ground that tends to maximize attractiveness and health, but drawing that line is a difficult task. In order to visually assess roughly what your body fat percentage is, the mid trunk and lower trunk area serve as a generally good guideline. This is because most people hold that around the stomach. And if you're a woman, the lower trunk area will serve as a better indicator. A man tends to lose fat in the abdominal region first. This difference can be attributed to hormonal variation between the sexes, and women also carry more fat than men in general. Thus, the ideal body fat in women will be around 7% higher than in men. Research by Fares and Bartholomew found that the waist to hip ratio, body fat percentage and BMI are all predictive correlates of female attractiveness. Body fat and waist to hip ratio are the most significant predictors of attractiveness. Body fat is arguably the most important since it affects a lot of other bodily and facial features. This study presented different levels of waist to hip ratio across different body fat percentages and past research has often confounded waist to hip ratio with body fat leading to inaccurate results. The most attractive images had a body fat percentage of 23% and a low waist to hip ratio of 0.68 and a somewhat low BMI of 19. This describes a slender yet curvy woman with athletic body fat percentages. Model Senna Gidley fits this build at about 5 foot 10 and 130 pounds. However, there were other body compositions that were similarly attractive and 20% body fat with 22 BMI is a bit leaner but with more muscle content than the previous and this was also found to be attractive in the study. From the results, the 20 to 25% range was the most attractive for women and in men this is correlating to the 10 to 14% range which is consistent with past research and medical guidelines. However, around the middle of the range seems to be the most attractive. Body fat percentages up to 32% can be still somewhat attractive for women but it steeply drops off and it depends quite much on the person itself. However, there are limitations to the study. The study did not factor in things that provide feedback on attractiveness like head size, shape, and other bodily variations. This paper also doesn't tell us how the body fat percentages affect facial attractiveness. Research on that front is actually quite lacking, but one paper by Rantala et al. 2013 discovered that a curvilinear association between body fat and facial attractiveness does exist for women. This simply means that either being too thin or too fat reduces facial attractiveness substantially. On a related note, men's facial attractiveness may cue into immune responses. That was not the case for women, however, but women's facial attractiveness is associated with long-term health and fertility. This is why an intermediary range of body fat is intuitively the most attractive for both men and women because it is normal but also healthy. So moving on, we can safely assume that the middle ground range of body fat percentages also makes the face appear most attractive. Because of Western beauty standards, we'll typically look its best in the lower ranges of 15-25% to for women and 8-17% to for men because we have a preference for sharp angular features which you typically see at the lower body fat levels. Additionally, the face does seem to be quite sensitive to weight gain. Facial definition can become obscured quite easily and anyone that has gained 20 pounds can attest to that. Everyone holds fat slightly differently, but as a general rule, a face at above 30% body fat can appear quite rounded. So perhaps being lower within the ideal range of body fat percentages will accentuate the facial structure more. That's not a crazy idea to think of. And this is where most fashion models seem to lie, with men being around the 9-12% to body fat range and women being almost below 18% in some extreme cases. 
and models also typically have lower BMI due to little musculature development. Thus, their faces can appear less full or even gaunt, and that doesn't apply to all models, but this phenomenon is certainly more common among fashion models. In women, this reasonable yet angular range could be between 16-22%, to but again, it depends on the development of the bone structure. In men, usually the 8-14% to range tends to bring out facial definition the most. Being right in the middle of these ranges seems to be the best compromise between facial definition, health, and having an attractive, maintainable body. Straying from the range will result in a steady drop off in both bodily and facial attractiveness, and that's something we see time and time again in the research literature. The study by Bartholomew and Ferries indicates that being above 38% body fat in women seems to yield the lowest attractiveness ratings. In men, this would likely be about the 30% mark. The first way that body composition affects our face is through body fat. Leaner faces tend to appear more angular, similar to how being lean makes the abdominal region, your six pack, appear more robust and defined. Most female Olympic track athletes will still have low body fat percentages in that 15-18% to range. The men also have lean builds near the 8-11% to range and this brings out their facial angularity. The ideal athletic body fat percentage really depends on the sport, but it is safe to assume that most athletes are in that healthy, low body fat range. Some events like long distance running favor even leaner and lighter builds, and there you'll find body fat percentages in the 14-16% to range and low BMI. This is done for the intentional purpose and doesn't necessarily produce the most favorable facial appearances. The beach body appearance is, again, a safe bet for maximizing facial attractiveness, and it's more around the 10-15% to range where facial contours will be accentuated around that level, but not to the extreme extent you see with long distance runners. The outline of the jaw will become defined and the cheekbones will have slight dips depending on the underlying bone structure, and similarly the cheekbones will seem to pop out more in the sagittal 3D direction. The region under the neck, referred to as the submental cervical region, will also become more angular as well. The most attractive values are in the 90 to 105 degree range as outlined by Naini et al, and this is not to say that more facial definition is always more attractive, but there is a healthy middle ground where the face appears full, healthy, and defined. The second factor is muscular content. If we look at the extremes of competitive bodybuilders, their faces hold a lot of muscular tone and definition that's independent of their body fat levels. This is because the face has muscles as well. Especially when exposed to exogenous hormones, the facial musculature will also increase, but more muscle doesn't necessarily mean more attractiveness. This affects our appearance, the effect is not as pronounced as your body fat changes, especially for non-bodybuilders, but muscular content does still make a noticeable difference. For example, you can build the masseter muscles, which are your most powerful chewing muscles, and this will result in a wider, more angular appearance of the jaw. Overdevelopment of the masseter muscles can lead to an unpleasantly full chipmunk appearance, so you have to be careful not to overdevelop the facial muscles either. Women will typically get masseter Botox to get the appearance of a slimmer jaw. The neck musculature is also changeable and has a surprisingly large role in how the face appears. Some male models are considerably muscular, and still they are not outside of the realm of normality. The faces do not appear too full or too muscular. The ideal amount of muscular composition in terms of a pleasant facial appearance is determined by one's BMI level that's relative to their body fat percentage. So if we assume an individual is in the ideal body fat percentage of say 15 to 25 percent for women and 8 to 17 for men, the normal BMI range of 18 to 25 is typically a good guide. It's difficult to get above the upper threshold, especially if your body fat is on the lower end of that spectrum. This simply looks like an athletic fit individual. They are neither too lean or too fat. And similarly, most attractive faces are not too muscular or thin either. Of course, it's possible to be attractive at either extremes, but averageness tends to produce the most healthy looking faces. This applies not only to facial proportions, but also symmetry and bodily composition, and generally appearing normal is a strong cue into health and beauty. A face of high averageness is going to be highly attractive, and a paradox exists whereby a normal attractive face is actually going to be lower in averageness. It's going to have more blemishes, more asymmetries, and more deformities. The takeaway here is that there is less emphasis on the exact value of the body fat percentage or the BMI, rather recognizing that there is a range that appears more healthy and does make the face appear more attractive. A few cues to pick up on are, say, the flat abdominal region, you know, having six packs, a higher waist to hip ratio for women specifically, a more defined jaw and cheekbones, being relatively strong and athletic more so for men, 
And these are indicators of things that will generally help you get a more defined face. These tend to come packaged with an attractive face. It is difficult to precisely tell what body fat percentage somebody is. Even with technology like DEXA scans, there is inaccuracy. A good tip is to focus on the overarching body composition instead of getting caught up on a specific number or bodily shape. Our face is the primary indicator of our health with clothes on and it's difficult for somebody of the opposite sex to identify body composition cues just from looking at it. Since our face can change drastically with changes to body fat, it serves as a great guide for helping you look your best. Being at a reasonable body fat percentage is going to ensure that your facial structure looks better and to see how facial fat affects specific facial structures, you can refer to this video here. If you'd like to get your face assessed and find out more about your facial structures, your facial fat, and how you can improve or change the way that you look, head over to the Coos website and get an assessment performed by a team of doctors and dentists. As always, I'll catch you in the next one.